All right, so we are getting started on our star screen build, our buddy build with Mr. ESU Warrior, and we kind of kind of dragged the uh, <laughs> dragged the anchor a little bit here because we had that show on Saturday and then kind of recuperating for the last couple days. Um, so we were going over all of our parts here, took them all out of the bags and everything last night. It was kind of taking you know give them a once over. I like the fact that there's a couple of different variations in color for the grays uh, and the blue. That's a nice color blue, but it doesn't look quite right uh, to my eye. And then the red is, um, it's got a little bit of a pearlescence to it, but it has a lot of these, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera here very well, but a lot of the swirls going on inside there. I don't care for that. And then also the, the red plastic is very translucent looking. So we're going to reinforce the red by uh, doing some uh, painting. So we're going to, of course, be doing everything based in gray and then a little bit of the pink for some of the red stuff. And then um, the colors we're going to be painting this guy is uh, these bits here. Uh, that'll be like uh, all, all, the, all the gray pieces. Uh, we're actually going to do it in a gloss aluminum. I think that's going to be a good color for that. We're going to up the color of the blue pieces a little with uh, going with this metallic blue here, TS-19. I haven't, obviously haven't used this before. So we will do a spoon check on that to make sure it's not too dark of a blue. And then uh, the reds we are going to use uh, TS-95 pure metallic red. I want to keep that metallic look that the uh, plastic is trying to convey. Uh, and you'll notice I just have the cap. It's because I have to go buy some more. So hopefully the store has some. And then uh, I think maybe we'll do like uh, some NATO black and then some German gray on these bits here and here. So those are the plans. But for right now, I was kind of just giving this a, 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 a light feel. And this stuff feels like it's got just a hint of an oily texture to it. So it could be mold release. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I don't like the feel of that. So I think what we're going to do is give everything a nice soak in some Dawn dish soap and then uh, get everything a dry and then go on from there. But it's going to be much simpler to just leave everything on the trees and give them a soak that way and then just hit them with the blow dryer later or drive around with the windows down in the car and hang them out the window. Uh, whichever comes first. <laughs> do have to do some errands today, like buy some paint. So so there we go. So yeah, so that's going to be the plan for this guy here. And uh, we're planning on doing this uh, kind of like a build vlog style. So we'll be back when we have more progress. And we'll talk to you then. All right, so we let these guys soak for a few hours in a tub full of uh, Dawn dish soap. And, um, and some lukewarm water uh, because uh, Han's too hot. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm mixing my genres here. Uh, so these are all... Pretty much dry. We hit them with a hair dryer, dried them down, and then uh, there's a few little um, nooks and crannies in there that probably have a little bit of water in them still. So we're gonna let them set and air dry. Furthermore, uh, the plan uh, after taking a close look at some of these, and uh, let's take a look at this. One. It's got some larger pieces on it, but these still have a lot of gloss on them, which is cool. Uh, if we're just going to go ahead and build this straight away, but we still want to paint this. So I'm thinking uh, once everything gets fully dried, we're going to go and scuff everything with maybe maybe a 3,000, some Tamiya 3,000 sanding sponges. And uh, just to break the surface of it up a little bit, because that is very sheeny still, very shiny. And uh, still has a little bit of a feel of uh, something that might have an issue with retaining paint on there. I'm not 100% sure if the primer, the, the Tamiya primer I want to use will actually bite into this okay. But again, we want to ensure that we're going to do a good job. And we do have a, a blue color that we uh, we kind of, we feel like we might work out for it. So um, we went to the store, we got our paint, and now we're just going to wait for the stuff to further drying and then start on it with uh, some Tamiya sanding sponges a little bit later on. And now back to Starstream. Okay, so as we left off, we were talking about scuffing the stuff up here with some uh, Tamiya sanding pads. Now, I I like to keep my sanding pad. I cut them into squares, rectangles, and uh, rectilinear uh, shapes. 
and uh, I'll just keep them. Um, they, they're they're pretty well used. So this feels like it's, it's supposed to be a three thousand, but it's probably more like a four thousand now because it's been used so much. So I like to keep some of the older stuff around so that um, if you want to do something like this type of a scuffing thing where it doesn't need to be a perfect brand new sanding sponge. That comes in real handy. Nice little drawer for that there too. It even says sand pads. So we're um I was looking at this last night and I was thinking, you know, it'd be kind of easy to just scuff everything on the on the um on the tree. And then it kind of hit me that I'm gonna have to take care of the little nibs and everything that from where we cut everything off the tree. So uh no matter how good you do, you're still gonna have a little bit of a nib here or there. So it seems like it would be a reasonable de uh, decision to actually start cutting pieces off and do small, sm uh, super small sub-assemblies and then, and then buff those up a little bit and then spray those. So that's, that's the path we're going to take with that. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started on that and then we'll uh, come back and join you when we have a little bit more to show. Okie dokie, artichokies. Uh, we're going to be back on to the uh, buddy build with our friend Matt over at ESU Warrior. And we're working on Starscream from Flame Toys. Um, now, he's mostly built. And here and here's the problem. Um, we had filmed some video of the assembly process. I don't know what happened to it. It is gone now. It is off into the world of, uh, of the future or whatever. But um, uh, the assembly process was pretty it was pretty painstaking uh specifically because i um i sabotaged myself and uh, i'll show you what i'm talking about here so getting out the instructions uh oh there goes the stickers goodbye stickers all right so let's see here let's find a good example to talk about let's give them something to talk about all right so um, you know, we did some, we did the rattle cam painting on him with, uh, the Tamiya colors. Um, let's see, we used TS-95 for the red, a nice metallic red. We used, uh, TS-19, a nice metallic blue. I think I have that right here. Here, there we go. Nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. Uh, and then we used, uh, TS-17 for the, uh, I think that's the gloss aluminum. We use that for all of the, 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 the gray bits here so uh, now here here's where we made uh, um, a major mistake that uh, I would like to I'm sure others will probably figure this is probably going to be an issue but for some reason I didn't I didn't take into account how well engineered this kit is so the little pins that are on the back side of pieces that press into the itty bitty little holes we see here just barely fit so any paint anything on those pins they do not fit in there so i had to spend a lot of time actually trying to clean off the pins that wasn't really working so well so i got out the uh the uh, the, the set of drill bits so i can uh open up the holes a little bit better that worked a little bit better but it was still i had to do it by hand you know twirling twirling the bits by hand because i didn't want to drill through or crack the plastic or anything because it, it did feel a little bit on the brittle side so yeah, um, assembly was painstaking, and by that I mean um, my fingers hurt because of all the heavy pressing, all the heavy pressing we had to do to get stuff to to, to fit up, and um, yeah, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a problem on our issue on our part. So I'm just you know a word to the wise: if you're going to be painting one of these kits here, you can rattle can if you want to. I would just uh, take like, for example, these bits here. That I know they have some gubbins that go on the inside there, but I still press them together well enough to where you can paint the whole unit, get the get the color, tone, and shade all the same all the way around, and then uh, when they're fully cured, pop them apart and then and then add in the gubbins and put them back together again. Uh, this bit right here, we actually did this correctly. We thought we saw this little spine piece in here. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. We can actually just put those together, mask a little bit on the top so we don't get any paint down inside there. And then uh, by that, I mean, I used some of this, uh, some of this blue tack gum stuff here. I have, uh, I've had for years. Um, after you've been using it a lot, it turns this color. <laughs> It's pretty gross. Um, this is that's actually a newer uh, uh, bundle. There, I threw out one that had absolutely no tack left to it at all. It was tactless. Uh, we don't like that here at the shop. We we like to be tacked full. So, 
Uh, we uh, did a little bit of uh, masking on there so we didn't get anything on the little connection points and then we pressed everything together and then painted it up and it, that bit looks great. So that was, you know, that was nice and happy. I did not do that for all the pieces. Um, these guys here, of course, are two different colors. We did this in German gray and we did that in the metallic metallic red. And uh, as luck would have it, since we were painting the, the back side of this here, didn't get too much paint on the inside, but we still had to do a little bit of cleaning up on the inside. Uh, this piece here, we were able to actually glue together because it was it was kind of separating a little bit. So we pinched it together, glued it together, sanded it out the seam. That came out looking really nice. And then the wings, the wings were um, major major issue because they're well, they're wings. They're they're two sided. Uh, just um, yeah, they're two faced, just like Starscream is. So uh, we took this little connecting piece here that that it showed here, and we we didn't mount it to the actual piece it's supposed to be connected to. We just stuck it to the wing and used that as our holder bracket deal, so that we could actually paint the wing, and um, that's coming out pretty nice. Now, um, enough of that. I could go on for another 15, 20 minutes about every single piece on there. But with this dude here, he's got so much articulation going on, probably more than I do nowadays, uh, that uh, parts bump and clang into each other. So again, not a toy. We're going to set him up into a particular pose, put him in a case and walk away. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the Decepticon signal here is actually raised. I was like, cool, that's awesome. Well, there's a decal for that. Well, I say decal, but in reality, it is a sticker. And um, I'm not 100% sure how good that's going to look. So I'm thinking we might try painting it. I do have something left over from another build. Some of this stuff here, we used that on the, uh, on the Cancer Awareness Group build. Violet Azul or blue violet so um i might just brush on that stuff there and then maybe do a seal coat over the top of that to protect it so it doesn't flake off or rub off or something like that and then the uh the stickers we have some pretty wicked looking stickers here that uh actually are going to be taking you know they that red hockey stick one goes along this one here and then the white one follows this one here I'm actually considering how deep these grooves are and such. I'm totally considering actually taking the wings back off again and then just masking it out and then spraying them on, spraying the paint on there rather than doing the sticker deal. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of a clean, a lot better, a lot cleaner look. And then look, he's even got marker lights right here. So we'll do those red and green. The instructions have them both red, but I'm like, nah, let's do red and green. I mean, he's supposed to be a, he, back in the day, it was an F-15 Eagle. So let's make them look like a fighter jet. And then all these little hash marks and stuff, those all have little, some of the, some of them have little deca um, decals that go in there. Oh, uh, these guys here, <coughs> excuse me, these little triangular bits here, it's easier to paint those than it is to actually peel those off and stick them in there. And then here's some of the venting that he has around him. Um, though Those are supposed to, uh, like this, these little bits back here, those are supposed to have those decals on there also. I'm, I'm like, no way, no way that that, de that, that sticker is going to compound all around all that venting and stuff. So uh, well, we went ahead and painted those. And I'll probably, my, I might do a little bit of a dry brush on those to bring them out a little bit better. But um, other than that, other than the, the painting issue and the fact that I was having some trouble assembling stuff and losing the footage, of course, uh, I must have been cursed by Lucas E, uh, that uh, um, everything else is going really, really well. I, I, I hesitate to actually put him on his legs just yet because uh, we're so close to getting to the point where we can start doing touch-ups and then move on to the weathering. And I'm not going to use the Tamiya weathering, uh, um, what do they call it, the panel liners, but I'm going to use the Tamiya panel liners. I'm going to try... Um, using some oil paints and uh, I've done that before on big rig builds and stuff I just I just want some pin washes I don't need them to be grimy I'm, I'm not going to do a battle damage version of him because he just looks too cool as he is uh, one little side note I discovered uh, there there are red lenses in there for his eyes and uh, one, one side note is I just discovered before before switching on the camera that there is a little silver decal that's supposed to go behind his eyeballs to help them um, be a little more luminescent or something like that. And uh, it is just, I'm like, oh, really? Okay, you know what you got to go through in, <laughs> in order to get behind his eyes? Um, this is a well-protected area. 
so uh, I think it's actually going to be better. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's worth it, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll take his head apart, get behind the eyeballs, and then hit it with some of this stuff, some of this Gundam marker stuff, and uh, see, get behind the eyes there and, and, and uh, brighten those up a little bit so they don't look like dark holes. But yeah, uh, so far... Uh, I'm really digging this kit. I mean, I, I've done Optimus Prime and Megatron so far. Um, there are a few issues with these guys, specifically the uh, the bits that are actually the joints. There's these little rubbery type of things that go into the holes and such that the pins fit through and, and act as uh, they, they give they give some friction so that you can pose them and stuff like that. Right? Some of that material is just so tight that even though I cleaned up the surfaces because they had a little bit of paint on them here and there, putting the pins through those things was, was just so difficult. One of his knee joints actually uh, came apart. Um, let's see. I don't remember which one it is. But down inside, it just split, came apart, and gave up the ghost. So uh, it, it's still pressure fit in there. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty. But, uh, I mean, it is his backside, so... <laughs> But uh, let's back out here a little bit. There we go. Um, but uh, uh, the color palette's working for me since it's all Tamiya paint. And I just love how the, the metallic red is looking. Uh, I'm almost of a, of, a, of a mind where I'm like, you know what? I could probably hit that with some polish and uh, bring out the color even better because it's got a little bit of a dullness to it. Um, but uh, but Starscream does not need to look like Iron Man. It does not need to look like a hot rod. Uh, but I'm like, dude, this is looking so cool. So, yeah, you see the, the thick lines down here? Those are supposed to be like that. So this is where the washes and stuff would really help out with making letting you know that that's supposed to be there rather than it's um, an assembly issue. Very cool. Check it out. He's got those little uh, elevators. I mean, his elevators, his... Um, Vertical stabilizers stick out the back here, and then they also tuck back in. Oh, that's sharp. Oh. So there we go. That's kind of cool. Oh, these have to come out and get painted also, but they just press in place. So uh, that's the whole key about this thing is it's one big press in place. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop this video here and uh, do some editing so we can get this up on the web so y'all can watch this and enjoy it. And uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later on. Bye.